um, that had hold of the president, Minister Farrakhan, and um, Sharpton, and saying these are the ones that are responsible. Now, I know just by, I can only speak on one clip because I heard the whole speech. Minister Farrakhan never advocated killing a police. Never. That's well, wait, 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 wait. Oh, hold on now. Now, you want facts? Then what was he saying? I want 10,000 amongst a million to kill those. What was he talking about? What he was talking about in that speech, he was talking about, and this is just my opinion, he was talking about more scripturally, talking about with Jesus at the head of 10,000, because if we're going to be... No, he wasn't. He wants them to go out and kill. I mean, we have the soundbite. I'm not going to play it again. Farrakhan clearly called for the murder. He called for murder. He said so. He screamed in the most horrendous voice, I want 10,000 men amongst a million to go out and kill those who oppress them. What was he talking about? Okay, because, because what, there were two different points, number one. And number two, on that same speech, he said that don't bring any weapons that day. We don't need any weapons that day. We just, our unity. Well, I only wish I could believe you, and I only wish that Farrakhan was a true uh, preacher of uh, peace. I don't believe it at all. I believe he preaches hatred and violence on a regular basis, and I think that unto itself, that's very, very dangerous for America, especially when he's doing it under the cloak of Islam. Well, Dr. Dr. Savage, if you notice that we've been in existence over 80 years in America here, and the Nation of Islam, according to the Federal Bureau of Investigation reporting, not, not under this president, have, have detailed that, you know, while there's incendiary language or strong language, we, we don't carry as much as a pen knife. We don't, you know... I, I hope you're right. You sound like a man of peace. I wish that your brethren were the same. We are very much so. I mean... Well, no, I, I think that the Nation of Islam can do good for individuals. I know that they preach against alcohol and drugs. That's a good thing. I get that. That's a wonderful thing. But when they go into the violence part, that's a bad thing. And one more thing. I, I posted a picture on your Facebook page. Last week in Memphis, he had police officers that been helping out in his, they volunteered and helped out in his escorting as he's going around, you know, with the motorcycles and everything. Black and white was in his suite. They were in a circle, all embraced and, you know, hand-holding and in prayer. You know what I mean? All right, look, you're a member of the Nation of Islam. I'm not here to knock it. I'm not here to say you're wrong. I'm here to say to you, if it does good, I'm all for any religion. But when they start preaching killing and death and hatred, and it yields the killing of police, it's bad. No, but he's definitely not about killing police. That That is... Well, well the, who did he mean when he said, I want 10,000 men amongst a million to go out there? And he said kill. I have the tape. I don't want to play it again. You mix them two up. I'm give you. All right, all right. So, who was he saying when I want you to go out and kill? Who was he meant, meaning when he said kill? I want you to go out and kill. Number one, he said. Yeah, I wish. You no, wait, wait. Know. He did say it. I have the tape. No, he didn't. He said, "I want you to go out and kill those who oppress you." Who was he referring to? Go. He said, "Now, of course, if somebody oppresses you, meaning if somebody." Attacks no, you're changing the words of the actual sermon. The sermon said, I want you to go out and kill those who oppress you. That death is sweeter than life. It's sweeter than living in tyranny. Those don't seem like the words of an American preacher. They sound like the rhetoric. That sounds like the rhetoric coming out of ISIS. No, it's not. Because if you ever read the Bible, you heard worse. But the point I'm making is... Well, 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 now you're mixing apples with oranges. Of course there's worse in the Bible. I've said it myself, the Old Testament is full of fire and brimstone. Only I'm not a biblical absolutist. If I were, everybody would be dead. If anybody tries to kill you, you have the right to, to defend yourself, even if it means take... Right, but so who was Farrakhan referring to? Who, who was he referring to? Old ladies with, with umbrellas? He was referring to obliquely to police. No, and, he was get, and he was sending out a signal, in my opinion, to go out there and kill police. He, first of all, he has said too many things, the polar opposite of that, for you to take a case. All right, look, I understand you're a member of the Nation of Islam. God bless you for being so. Thank you for being a listener. But, you know, if you have any sway over your leader, perhaps you ought to clarify his remarks so that a few people who are not as kind and as good as you don't get the wrong impression. You know what? If, if In other words, if I, as a, as a pretty skilled analyst, can be confused 
by his message, then I would think that there are others who might be a little mixed up by it. If they didn't hear a carefully crafted clip, if they heard the whole thing, then they would understand the context. Of what well, no, he said, go out and kill those who oppress you. Who could he mean other than cops? Now, if you've got to hear the whole thing that leads up to... And I'd rather not hear the whole thing, truthfully. I'd rather not listen to it. I'd rather not listen to it anymore. I, I only wish that there were more men like you uh, in the nation of Islam who are peace-loving, who could bring peace to the world instead of uh, uh, murder and hatred. And I thank you for your time, but one more thing. I thank you. No, no, thank you. That's a thank you. It's good. It's good. Rarely does a man like that get to have so much time on my show. But actually, it's good to have him on the show. Just to, listen, I'll tell you why. Didn't I say to you that liberals will listen to me? Why do you listen to me? And a guy calls from Florida, liberal uh, Fort Lauderdale, and says, I would like you off the air, he says, because you overgeneralize. I said, what do you mean? You, you like the overgeneralizations of Obama about all of those topics that he speaks about? Or the Pope, for that matter, with his overgeneralizations? And, of course, unfortunately, we lost him, so we couldn't have that discussion. 855-400-7282 is the phone number. FTL Florida. Robert, welcome to the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Well, I was calling you because uh, I like listening to you, but there's lots of times that I uh, disagree. Especially, uh, I'm kind of old school about uh, the office of the president, and I feel that once we elect a president, we can disagree, but we don't have to call him a liar. And well, wait, well, excuse me, sir. How do you think you prevent dictatorships? You mean no matter what he does, we have an obligation to kiss his feet? No, no, that's not what I said. I said that we can disagree with him in a gentlemanly way, but we have to... Why? Why? He's not a gentleman. He's a snake. He's just the most skilled snake I've ever seen in my life. Call him a snake when you call him a liar. Well, he is a liar and a snake, in my opinion. What should I call him? A man who I disagree with? Exactly. You can disagree with him, but you, you can't... Oh, well, thank you for telling me what I can do and not do. I really appreciate the guidelines. Thank you. Appreciate that. I appreciate that very much. I'll, 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 I'll print your guidelines up on the ceiling and follow them. I'll tell you something about snakes and liars. That unless they're opposed, unless they're really opposed and called out for who they are, they're going to destroy the nation. It's that simple. There is no way to deal with snakes and liars who are so skilled at being snakes and liars other than to expose them for being a snake and a liar and then you hope that millions of people will finally do something about it climate change crime it's beyond comprehension how crazy this man is his agenda is so insane it's hard to believe that people would not get agitated and call it like it is i don't get it what do you mean i have to respect the president you mean if a murderous dictator would arise i have to respect that as well I didn't say he's a murderous dictator, but I said what? If a murderous dictator were to arise in the presidency, all you good liberals, what would happen if a right winger becomes president? It didn't seem to control, you didn't seem to control yourselves uh, when Ronald Reagan was president, or more closely when uh, Bush was president. You couldn't shut your mouths bashing Bush, could you? Day and night, you called him every name under the sun. Suddenly, you didn't care about the dignity of the presidency, did you? But when it comes to this guy, oh, he's above the law. Why is he above the law? Tell me why he's above the law. I'll be right back to take your calls on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. It is the Savage Nation. I'm, I'm having a little trouble here technically. The sound is going up and down. Nothing's the same. But here's a little news for you, if you can hear me. I don't know if my microphone's even working. It looks like Obama's going to win on the Iran deal. So celebrate all you self-hating Jews who hate Israel. Obama picks up more support for Iran deal, needs only one more senator to prevail. Congratulations, all of you self-hating Jews. Two more Democrats announced support Tuesday for President Obama's giveaway to Iran, putting the White House a single senator away from assuring it can prevent Congress from scuttling the agreement and leaving GOP leaders hoping to avoid an even bigger embarrassment of losing to a filibuster. So that's it. He won again. It's that simple. He won again. Now, Iran will get the bomb. He won't be in the office. And he'll leave the ticking time bomb in the hands of the Republican, a winner of the presidency, assuming it happens. It's astounding to me. Affordable health care, meaning socialized medicine, releasing terrorists from Guantanamo, 
uh, granting uh, favored nation status to Cuba, a terrorist nation, and now a bomb for Iran. These are great accomplishments, and it proves beyond a reasonable doubt that liberalism is a mental disorder. It's that simple. Affordable health care, socialized medicine that will bankrupt the nation. Who do you think is going to pay for the health care of all the illegal aliens who are pouring into the nation? You, you sap. Whatever happened to the terrorists they released from Guantanamo so far? They went back to the battlefield. What about normalizing relations with the Castros without demanding one person be released from the dungeons? Is that a good deal? What about giving Iran a bomb when they're the number one terrorist supporting nation on earth? No, the only thing this monster has succeeded in doing is weakening the nation. 15 more months for more damage. Iran will get $150 billion to go shopping for intercontinental ballistic missiles from Russia and China. And once the launching pad is ready, I'm sure all you liberals will have an umbrella provided by the Democrat Party. Don't worry about that. You'll be given an umbrella by uh, the um, De Democrat Party that will protect you from nuclear fallout. Well, you know, the liberals happen to have armed the Japanese prior to World War II. Did you know that? Oh, it's a long story. So now they're clearing the way to allow Iran to develop nuclear weapons. Is history repeating itself? What can I say to you? And here we are, my friends. The Savage Nation open for business as usual. Phone number 855-400-7282. Any topic is fair game. Any topic is fair game on the Savage Nation. I say bring back the death penalty for all cop killers. Any cop killer, automatic death penalty. Automatic death penalty within two years. One appeal, two appeals at most, and you get, you get the, the chair or you get the needle. Death penalty for cop killers. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Financial talks about saving the polar bears. The Dow is down 400 points. We're talking about the war on police triggered by this radical administration well over a year ago as part of their overall plan to eliminate local police departments and federalize them so that we have the equivalent of the SA and the SS reporting only to their Führer. That's how it works, you see? And if you like the way the Mexican federales operate, hey, get used to it, buddy, because that's what Obama has in mind for the United States of America. One gigantic federalized police force reporting to Al Sharpton. Can you imagine? You say it can't happen here? Well, my friends, wake up. It happened while you were here. Now let's go to my time in America. This would never have happened in my time when I was a kid. If a cop was shot in New York City when I was a boy, the entire city would come to a halt. And at the time, there were, what, 20 or 30,000 police? Every cop, whether they were off duty or on duty, would be called in, and there'd be an around-the-clock manhunt. And moreover, the underworld would put their own resources to finding that cop killer because they understood that it was very bad for business. And so even the underworld, the criminals work with the cops to get the cop killer. The, the criminals, the real criminals or the real criminal organizations never, ever shot a cop. And when they did find them, let me tell you something. There was no bleeding heart lawyer from NYU or Columbia telling us about the bad childhood the cop killer had. Let me tell you something else. If we don't go back to the times uh, that I lived in, there'll be no times for you to live in at all. Michael Savage wrote Stop the Coming Civil War a year ago. I warned you that Obama had an intention. And he has conducted a civil war against all civil aspects of this society from the day he seized power. From the day he was foisted upon us by forces we will never ever comprehend. This man has had a vendetta against the institutions that have made this nation great. And one of the institutions that stands in the way of his total and complete takeover of this nation are the local police forces in the country. He has already decapitated the military 
which is why they're not fighting ISIS. There's some grumbling down below the colonel level from those who say we could have knocked ISIS out in a week. But no one's asking questions in the media, are they, Mr. Roger Ailes, as to why the president of the United States is not taking down ISIS, not yet a subject on the great Fox News network. I dismiss all the other networks because they were dismissed by the American people of uh, a thinking nature a long time ago. But the last link that we had of any hope was the Fox News network until it was